11 sailors were injured in October 2020 when the U.S. Navy Sea Wolf submarine crashed into an underwater ridge, many in the press have called it a sort of underwater mountain, in the South China Sea, an accident said to be preventable according to an official Navy investigation. Sea Wolf in Trouble The Navy's assessment of the incident, which also raised the need for mental health support for crew members traumatized by the accident, found that navigational seafarers responsible for guiding the submarine also missed as many as 10 underwater hazards near the crash site. The investigation stated that the USS Connecticut navigation team incorrectly concluded that the submarine would operate in an open area. The submarine also suffers from low standards as the ship's leadership does not hold sailors accountable for navigational errors or deficiencies. Perhaps this was preventable human error, poor concentration, or some kind of malfunction in the navigation system. Of course, the substandard performance of the navigation team, as cited in the report, likely stood out in the interrelated pool of factors that led to the accident. Among other things, a Navy investigation resulted in the dismissal of the submarine commander. The Sea Wolf class submarines, first built in the 1980s, were Cold War era ships intended to rival or outperform the Soviet Union's Typhoon class. They appeared in the 1980s and then were deployed in the 1990s. But the end of the Cold War resulted in a budget reduction in the size of the Navy's planned fleet and the Virginia-class submarines were built. Technology Issues Whatever the cause, the incident highlighted a critical technology issue the Navy has been working on in recent years. First, manual navigation controls such as the mechanical hydraulic systems used in the Sea Wolf and early Virginia-class submarines presented some difficulties. Of course, Manual mechanical systems are probably far more susceptible to human error than the computerized fly-by-wire navigation systems now operational on the Virginia Block 3-class attack submarines. The depth and speed of this submarine can be adjusted by the joystick and then monitored and controlled to some extent by computer automation. Computer systems can also be integrated into the acoustic sensors in such a way that they receive timely warnings if objects, debris, mines or other obstacles may cause a collision. With fly-by-wire technology, the boat is primarily maneuverable via software code and electronics, eliminating the need for a human operator to perform every minor maneuver. Using real-time analytics and the instantaneous ability to leverage and organize huge databases of information and sensor input, computer algorithms can now perform many procedural functions historically performed by humans. Using fly-by-wire also makes the submarine quieter and less detectable by enemies. Fly-by-wire problem. The accident with the Sea Wolf class submarine only underscores the importance of migrating to fly-by-wire for safety reasons, and there are also major tactical reasons why fly-by-wire makes a difference for the future. Submarine sensor technology has evolved substantially in recent years and the Virginia class attack submarines in particular are increasingly being considered as ISRs or surveillance platforms. They are of course often able to move closer to high-risk enemy territory undetected whereas approaching surface ships can of course be seen from great distances. As far back as 2018, the Navy published a Commander of Intentions for United States Submarine Forces document that highlighted the importance of covert surveillance missions for attack submarines and is often best used in stealth, clandestine, independent operations, and we exploit the advantages of undersea stealth that allow for undetected operations such as strategic deterrent patrols, intelligence gathering, special operations force support, non-provocative transit, and repositioning. There is tension between the U.S. Navy and the South China Navy over territorial, waters and resource rights issues in the South China Sea region. However, it should be remembered that international relations and geopolitics are very complex and change from time to time, so the changes in dynamics and situations may occur in the future. Tensions and conflicts between nations involving navies are serious issues and must be handled with care and discretion. Usually, countries try to find a peaceful solution and avoid direct military confrontation. Diplomacy and negotiation are important tools for reaching mutually beneficial agreements and understandings. I suggest to always follow reliable and up-to-date news sources to understand the current situation if there is any sport between U.S. Navy and South China Navy or between other countries. Changes in international politics and security can occur quickly, and the latest news will provide the most accurate information about the latest developments on the international scene. The South China Sea is a maritime strategy rich in natural resources and a major trade route. Several countries, including China and some ASEAN countries, 
have overlapping territorial claims in the region. China, in particular, has cemented its claim to large parts of the South China Sea by claiming it is historically its absolute territory. The US also has strategic interests in the region and has expressed support for freedom of navigation in international seas, including the South China Sea. The US Navy frequently conducts freedom of navigation patrols near islands claimed by China as a demonstration that it does not recognize those claims. Territorial disputes and tensions in the South China Sea have raised concerns about a potential military escalation between the US and China. Both countries have a significant military presence in the region, and minor incidents between ships and military aircraft from either side occasionally occur. Nevertheless, the two countries also have a great interest in maintaining stability and avoiding direct conflicts that could adversely affect regional stability and global trade. A great deal of effort is made to keep communications open and minimize the risk of incidents which could lead to further tensions.